After a Canadian Grand Prix filled with excitement, we jump across the pond for the first European race of the season. Welcome along to Hungary for race three of the late-breaking online racing league. It might be early, but championship hopefuls are already making themselves known, and no one wants to get left behind. The Hungara ring should provide a tricky challenge for these hopefuls. Often described as an overgrown karting track, there are many difficult low-speed corners strung together, meaning a lap of Hungary requires concentration and rhythm with little margin for error. The lack of strength makes it tough to overtake, particularly in the winding middle sector, so the drivers will need plenty of practice in order to achieve good results. If they do fancy an overtake, the run down to turn one generally provides the best opportunity. Last season, Curly Apex was able to get a good run out of the final corner and use the DRS to his advantage to make the pass possible under braking. Unfortunately, not all overtakes go as swimmingly as that. Last season's battle for the lead saw some close racing between Noob and Jack Hickey, but it was the former that came off worse as he got too close to the back of the Toro Rosso. And then there are some overtake attempts that are downright ambitious. Moves going into turn six don't occur too often, but Rufford Ninja somehow squeezed past Gilly. There was plenty of contact in doing it. However, as a result of the move, he ended up on the podium. 13 corners make up the 4.4 kilometer circuit here, five to the left and then eight going to the right. Last season, Jack Hickey mastered the technical challenge here to take victory at what is his favorite circuit. Can he win this race and kickstart his season? Well, I don't know if that's going to be necessarily the case there, Ben. Jack Hickey is someone who is up and down on form. We saw that last year, and we're seeing it currently again this year. It seems that a lot of the top drivers that did well in race one didn't fare too well in Canada, and this is a totally different track once again. So it could be very difficult to see them pass if they have a poor qualify. What do you think? Yeah, completely different circuit, Hungary. Of course, Canada relies a lot on top speed. Hungary, it's all about downforce. It's all about the performance of the chassis. Of course, all 20, 18 drivers, I should say, in this scenario. Uh, they have the same car so there's no chassis advantage it's all about how well you do in the corners you can see there VP Giblin's gone out on the soft tires Main has gone out on the medium tires and they're, they're actually skipping a compound because there's no super soft tires making an appearance in Hungary so do you think Harry going out on the soft tires is going to be a really tricky ass to get anywhere going out on the soft tires is tricky going on the medium tires is just ridiculous what is the point in that that's just never going to work Mayna looking at you um, he, yeah yeah, that's a that's a tough that's a tough one. Soft that maybe could work, but surely that's just going to be that's going to be like a shopping trolley. But it is worth bearing in mind here that tire wear can get high, but more importantly, tire temperatures can go off, off the off the charts. Um, so those on ultra soft tires to start the race might have to abandon them fairly quickly. So if you can set a reasonable lap time on the soft tires, it might be worth it. As we're on board now with Jay Ghost, as we say, the first person across the line, so he starts his lap. Yeah, keep an eye out for the likes of Kazi Yohannes, who really like to do a one-stop strategy as the Ferrari pulls out the way there. Uh, they like to do a one-stop strategy. Well, we wouldn't be surprised if we see them qualify around 5th to the 8th region on the uh, middle compound tyre, to then probably drop onto the, uh, the medium tyre halfway through the race. Lots of cars getting out the way for the fast laps, which is really good to see. And there's more yellows this time in Sector 2. Uh, and that's a Williams. That's Duxky uh, gone around. No quack, quacking. Quack, <laughs> quack. Quack, quack, well, that's some editing work to do. As you can see, pretty much everyone's gone out for an early lap. It's only Caesar t Pain who's still in the pits. So despite the fact that there's 18 minutes of the session, everyone willing to get out there early. Jay Ghost comes in with a 116.3. Um, and we'll have to see if anyone can get close to that. It's hard to tell if that's a competitive lap time or not. It is 1.6 seconds quicker than the pole time last time out, which is interesting. That is interesting, actually. Damn, that's a, some serious pace from the Ghost. Here comes the Pooley boy, opens the DRS, 15, 16, across the line, he goes into second place, he's a tenth behind his teammate, those two incredibly close together. Well, the last Grand Prix ended with a McLaren 1-2, and it, this Grand Prix starts with a McLaren 1-2, I'm sure there'll be plenty of times rolling in, Carnes gets very, very close to the top two, but he'll have to settle for third at the moment. And Bilal Khan has actually beaten them all, Bilal Khan in the red ball, a 116-2 for him. Home back now, just coming through the final sector in that wonderfully pink Force India 
uh, going, oh, it's a huge tank sapper out the back end. That's not going to help his lap time. Hovet was a strong middle rung. I had a great battle with DK Marshall in the first race. Over to DRS, comes across the line and slots into third place. It is very competitive in that top six. Absolutely, because Homeback's gone into third behind Bilal Khan, but that's because VP Giblin has got provisional pole position, a 116-1. But as you say, there's about three temps between the top six, so competitive from the from the off here. Shiki and a few other drivers. Shiki was backwards, and they've all pulled into the pit. Shiki is now going over the grass. He's off the other side of the pit lane. Uh, he's, he's spinning in the pits. Yes, I think he's just about avoided a full-on spin there, but not ideal for him. Duxky, though, after his 132.2, isn't... Oh! He's entered the... He's hit the pit entry! Well, that is a shocker. I guess if you have to do it, do it in qualifying, but yes, as you say, a terrible start oh, to no. the race for him. Jay Ghost is uh, coming through the second sector now using all of the curb there. I think he's backed off, hasn't he? He has backed off, yeah. He's backed off out of that one. Letting the red ball through. Yes, so going back on board with Bilal Khan now as he negotiates turn 11, which will then turn into turn 12. Important to stay fairly narrow here. You don't want to get too wide and lose the car. Going now into turn 13. Is he going to be able to set a competitive lap time? It looks pretty good from him. He needs to improve by about a tenth. And he doesn't oh. quite. He remains about a hundredth off the pole time of VP Giblin. So a good effort from Bilal Khan, but not enough to topple the guy there. VP Giblin, who's looking to improve further on his time. A couple more lap times have come in. Jack Kiki's gone into, well, it was seventh before Johannes actually displaced him there. Mr. Psycho Sane is in ninth. So they're in the mid 116s. They still need to improve by about half a second to chase this guy, VP Giblin, who's going to come around the final corner. Sees a T-Pay game goes goal. fastest. A 116-138. Can VP Giblin go right back where he was? No. No, he's a couple temps slower on his original lap time. So Caesar t pain and the Sauber now has pole position. Yep, Gilzo has retired. He's currently P11. Not sure if he's retired in the pits or on circuit, but he might be starting a little further back than that if anyone else improves. Hepuli boy, he isn't going quickly enough. Jay Ghost goes fastest with a 115.8. He's gone about three temps quicker than Caesar T-Pain. They've been celebrating that one. He enjoyed it. That's what we like to see, a little bit of showmanship. Yeah, Jay Ghost, after getting pole position in Canada, is looking to make it two in a row. Caesar T-Pain sits in second, but his teammate all the way down in 15th place. DJ Marshall is on a lap, and he's five tenths up on the 10th place time at the moment. Could we see him jump into the top six or seven? He's aiming to come eighth overall this race. Yeah, and you'd think he would be able to get into that top ten somehow, because he has shown a good amount of pace. He was running P4 for much of the Canadian Grand Prix before a tangle with Charlie. He showed good pace at Brazil after starting near the back. So if he can get a good qualifying position here... You'd imagine he'll be on something good. He's about a second up on his time, actually. So this should be good enough to get at least up to P13. That is depressing that he's a second up, but he's only going to move up two places. Quite possibly. We'll have to see how this final sector goes. It might have been where he messed up on his original run. Uh, and he's going to cross the line here. And it's a 1.69. So, yeah, it was only a, it was a second quicker but still a few temps off getting in the guys above him. Yeah, Bilal Khan struggled in the last race, and a, lot, a main reason of that was because he couldn't get a good enough starting position. Uh, P4 is better than he was doing last time out, but he'll be looking to go even better than that. A front row berth would be fantastic for him uh, as he goes down into turn two. It's a relatively short opening sector, but very easy to just lose the car at one moment. We'll have to see what his sector time is based on his previous best and it won't say good oh, i love code maskers two more corners to see if he can get anywhere near jay ghost or if he can even beat caesar t-pain and vp giblin above him one more corner to go a 115.8 is his target has he got anywhere near that mark 
He goes quicker. He goes second. A good lap from Bilal Khan, but it's not enough to displace Jay Ghost at the top. Yeah, with one minute and 30 seconds to go in the session now, Caesar T Pain is in the pit, so I don't know if he's going to get a lap time. He'd have to leave pretty much spot on now and hope that he doesn't have to slow up for cars on his outlap. Johannes has just exited the pits now, so it'll be a fight to the line to see if he gets a lap in. Uh, and similarly for Jay Ghost as well, he's on an outlap. Everyone else, though, is on a flyer. I think Carnes and Johannes might be a little bit disappointed with their, uh, their their pace around here. I think the same goes for Herpuli Boy. Those three were looking to be at the front for the most of the season. In fairness, the gaps are very, very slim at the moment. Just a couple of attempts improvement and then that could see them go right up the standings. Of course, the onus is on them to do it. On board with Carnes now. VP Gibling has backed out. Uh, Bilal Khan retired, so he won't be going for pole. VP, VP Gibling is warming up to do one final lap. Yeah, Khan's has actually lost it in the middle sector, so I don't know if he's going to be able to get another lap in. We saw something pretty similar in Canada, actually. He was on a flying lap and he couldn't get anything done. Funnily, Caesar T-Pain has actually gone on an outlap, but he's not going to be able to make the line, you would think. Homeback has now started his lap time. DJ Marshall's retired, so he will start 13th at best. And Hapuli Boy spins. Oh, and there's contact with Caesar t and He's not actually on a lap, so it won't matter. Oh, BP Gibling's lost it. He's in the wall. And that's lap over for BP Gibling. He's, he's managed to keep it out without taking a tyre off, but that's lap over. It looks as though Jay Ghosts could be the man on pole. Although Homeback... Oh, no, Homeback's gone! Homeback's lost his wheel! That's pretty much everyone Drama. done it, within a few seconds. Homeback retires from the session. Jack Hickey improves to P4, but he's done. I'm pretty sure that you is absolutely everyone. Oh, tight you had He just skimmed through the Ferrari, Ferrari there. Yeah. He's, he's putting his foot to, to the, the floor. floor. The only person that could displace Jay Ghost now is Johannes. Everyone else has either retired from the session or in the pits. Can Johannes get any further up than P9? It doesn't look like it. No, he's... Surely going too He's slowly here. Well. Yeah. That's going to be it for Johannes. That's going to be it for the session. Jay Ghost secures his second consecutive pole position. A couple attempts ahead of Bilal Khan. He's the only guy in the 115s. The top five are then going to be Bilal Khan in second. Caesar T-Pain in third. Jack Hickey is in fourth. And then VP Giblin is in fifth. You will see the cars going out for the formation lap now. 18 cars being led away by Jay Ghost. And oh, what's that I see? Baby, it's raining. Oh, baby, it's raining. Well, we don't know the strategy. We don't get to see that. So just like in real life, we're completely playing it by eyes. A pretty boy's already been disqualified. Will it dry up? Who is this going to play to? We haven't seen a wet running sofa. Shiki's been disqualified for a lot of seconds now. Of course he has. Yeah, all of the drivers are on intermediate tyres. The rain not quite enough to put on the full wets. Jay Ghost, as we say, leading the guys away. Bilal Khan is joining him on the front row. Caesar T-Pain is P3. Jack Kiki starts P4. He won this race last year, so watch out for him. VP Giblin is P5. Homeback starts P6. Khan's all the way down in P7, and he's alongside Hapuli Boy. The two guys who are leading in the championship, 7th and 8th. Johannes is in 9th. Nellez is in 10th. And then outside the top 10, Mr. Psycho Sane, P11, Gilzo, P12, DJ Marshall, P13, Maina, 14th, Curly Apex is in 15th, Purple Petrol, 16th, Shiki starts 17th, and then Duxky will start in 18th place. I can tell you a battle that I'm very excited for the legendary DJ Marshall making a combination alongside each other once again. It's going to be exciting. I'd watch out for that fourth row as well, which contains Khans and Hapuli Boy. They have, ch yeah, they're both leading the championship on 33 points apiece. And Jay Ghost, their nearest challenger at the moment on 25, is leading the way. So they'll be wanting to carve their way through the field. But there's so much talent about, it's going to be really difficult to do. As if we didn't need enough carnage, the intermediate tyres, the wet conditions could cause this to be an absolute bloodbath. All cars in position. We're going for third time lucky in terms of a non-glitch start. Hold your breath, everyone. Five red lights. 
and we are away and once again the cars will stay still because that makes sense and now we're away has anyone been caught out by the delayed start Mr Psycho saying Gilzo have got past Nellis I think he's got away pretty terribly that's a car going off in the background I think that was Curly Apex but out front look at the Toro Rosso Jack Hickey going up the inside what a bold move Caesar T-Pain from P3 has got the lead Jay Ghost and Bilal Khan both lose out Caesar T-Pain Jack Hickey Jay Ghost the top three Hapuli boys had a great start he's up into P5 home back looking to go around the outside of him the Force India but Caesar T-Pain from P3 on the grid has the lead yeah further back oh we've got contact with Nellis and DJ Marshall and uh, VP Kipling is retired again VP Giblin had a great starting position and he is out of the race for a third time in a row. You can see his car parked up there on the side. Curly Apex looking to recover from his start, which saw him in the wall. Got heavy front wing damage. But out front, Caesar t Pain and Jack Kiki both gain two places. Jay Ghost and Bilal Khan both lose two places. And Hapuli Boys had the best start of the lot. He's up three places. I take, take that back, Benjamin. Mayner's up five. Oh, he is. Great start for Mayner. All the way from P14, he's already in the points. Have to see how this goes. Carnes has gained a five-second stop go penalty. He's cut a corner there and apparently gained a place, um, but he's lost a load of places. So I'm not quite sure what has happened there. <clears throat> chaos in this midfield. Absolute chaos. Yeah, you can see Mr. Carnes. Psycho saying, DJ Marshall, Gilzo. Oh, was Carnes and Nellez going into battle there? Nellez is the one who does get by. Carnes isn't going to go into the pits. No. Hapuli boys go around the outside of Bilal Khan. He gets in down the straight. They're side by side going into the first corner. It looks like Hapuli boy takes it. Yeah, McLaren up the inside, but Bilal Khan has got better traction out of the corner, so he might be able to fight back going into turn two. Hapuli boy is going to take the inside line. Will that be enough to defend him from Bilal Khan? Dogged in his aggressive attacking, but not enough. Bilal Khan has conceded another position. So from P2 on the grid, he's down to P5. Now, the back end of the midfield between 10th and 12th is incredibly close together. Yeah, Khan's is going to have to look at carving his way through the field here. He didn't have the best starting position in P7. Surely something has happened because he's now down in P13. I think he has got front wing damage, actually, on his front right. Um, so we'll have to see what he can make of this race. But with Papuli Boy up in P4, Jay Ghost up in P3, he's more than likely going to lose out. Okay. Mr. Psycho saying looking to make a move on Mayner. And at the same time, Johannes and Homeback have come into battle there. I think Johannes is the one who is ahead and Mayner has managed to stay ahead of the Mercedes for the time being. So plenty of action. Caesar t Pain has opened up a bit of a gap now. He's nearly two seconds clear of Jack Hickey in second. Jay Ghost isn't leaving Jack Hickey alone though in P3. There's just six temps between them. And look at all the battling here. Johannes is in sixth place, but he's got about five cars within a second of him. Homeback looking... To, to overtake him but at the same time Maine is going up the inside of both oh, of them no. three wide into the corner and Johannes has gone round the outside of all of them to survive it but Homeback is still battling away with Maine this is crazy action this battle goes as far back as Gilzo they are hitting this contact again oh they are sliding oh, 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 no. he's gone oh, oh, he's out of the race Homeback home is back out is Nellis rams into the front of him after Gilzo, Mega all connect. Jay Ghost is only three tenths behind Jack Hickey. This is going to be exciting going down the start. Figure straight. Yeah, Jack Hickey got a great start to get ahead of Jay Ghost, but as you can see, Jay Ghost has clear pace around here. He's going to want to get past Jack Hickey because he'll feel as if he can catch Caesar T Pain in P1. Uh, Jack Hickey, though, we know he's not going to want to give that position away. Is he going to be able to get enough of a slipstream? Whilst at the same time, there's a battle for P4 going on. Bilal Khan looking to get the position back from Hapuli boy. Jack Hickey stayed in front of the McLaren. And at the same time, Bilal Khan, I think he might have got the position. No, not quite. They're still battling. And Hapuli boy remains P4. Bilal Khan will have to settle for P5 for the time being. Two great battles going on for P2 and P4 here. Mr. Psycho saying there's also only two tenths behind your hangers, literally nose to tail. And then DJ Marshall, who's done brutally to stay out of the carnage, is in eighth place and only half a second behind these two fighting. Yeah, he'll be looking to pick up the scraps here after not a good starting position. You can see Mr. S Johannes has gone very wide there. And Mr. Psycho saying looking to take advantage and he has. DJ Marshall got swamped behind him a little bit, so he couldn't take advantage of it. 
but he'll stay right on the back of him. Johannes is... It's the corner. Yeah, I think he must be suffering here. That's two corners he's gone very wide at. And yeah, there's front left damage, I think. Lose out. Look at the McLaren and the Torosso. They're still in battle. Jack Hickey just about keeping P2 over Jay Ghost. Jay Ghost is going to try an ambitious move and try and go all the way around the outside of Jack Hickey. No. Has he done it? Not quite. Jack Hickey's still there. I think he has. What He's an incredible it. move. He's only gone and done it. Oh, and Jack Hickey. Jack Hickey's had a bit of an incident, and Hapuli Boy is going to get past him, and so's Bilal Khan. Jack Hickey's lost out another two positions. Bilal Khan has hit the back of Hapuli Boy, and he's sliding up the inside. Bilal Khan is going to get the position back. Yeah, Bilal Khan, he's been on the back of Hapuli Boy for a couple of laps. That's Curly Apex coming into the pits. So, yes, it is now Bilal Khan in third place. Hippuli Boy is in fourth, and then Jack Hickey was in P2 just a little while ago, and he's now got three cars that aren't too far away from him. Now, this is playing perfectly into DK Marshall's hands. He uses full traction control on the settings, so in these changeable conditions, he's able to plant the power down a lot easier than these kind of half traction... Oh, no, he's hit the back of Jack Hickey there! That's how easy it is for him to put the power down. He's all over him. Considering how much Jack Hickey is struggling here he might have suffered front wing damage or maybe he's just really struggling with the conditions that's also a possibility oh and gilzo is McLaren. looking to go around the outside of mr psycho saying the track does look pretty much dry now it does isn't it curly apex actually went onto the soft tires when he went into the pits so he is the first one to bite the bullet and nelez is doing the same thing the guys at the back of the grid are all going for the soft tires they've got very little to lose Ooh. dj marshall up the inside of jack hickey drs he's done that two laps in a row that is gonna be a, a lucky hickey's gone back up the inside there's contact Yes, Hickey and DJ Marshall still side by side. I think they're both going to try and get... No, DJ Marshall isn't coming into the pits, but Jack Hickey is. All of the top four have gone into the pits. So DJ Marshall, at least for the time being, is going to lead this race. That would be why, because Caesar T playing his teammate who is leading the race is in the pits, does not want a double stack. Yeah, yeah, it looks as if everyone's going onto the soft tyres here. Jay Ghost is on the soft tyre. Bilal Khan is on the soft tyre. Let's see how far ahead... Let's see how far ahead Jack Hickey comes out in front of DJ Marshall. If he does come out, we don't know what tyres are going to be right for these changeable conditions just yet. Yeah, so Hapuli Boy's lost out massively there having to wait for Jay Ghost's pit stop. We'll have to see where he re-emerges. It will be behind Jack Hickey. And it's behind Gilzo as well, actually. So Hapuli Boy's demoted to P8. Uh, Johannes and Carnes are the only two guys... Uh, and Nelez, who are on the medium tyres. Jay Ghost now has got Bilal Khan in his sights. DRS is open. Can he catch him before the first corner? It's looking like there's just too much space between them. The question is, where will DJ Marshall, Mr. Psycho, Sain appear? DJ Marshall does come out ahead of the Mercedes only just, but where will it be in the context of everyone else? It's behind Jack Hickey, uh, but DJ Marshall has appeared ahead of the Force India of Gilzo. Talk about a dream first nine laps for Caesar T Payne. He started in P3, got P1 off the line, and he now holds an 11 and a half second gap back to Bilal Khan in second, who is only just holding off Jay Ghost at the minute. Jack Hickey's in a bit of a world of his own in P4. Uh, five seconds clear of DJ Marshall in P5, who has Gilzo not very far behind him. And Mr. Psycho saying P7. Hapuli Boy lost out massively in the pit stops. He's P8. Johannes, is there anything he can do from P9? Mayna is on the back of him in P10. Uh, and then Khan's looking to make the medium tyres work in P11. On board now with Mayna as he tries to go around the outside of Johannes. And Johannes is really struggling for grip. And I think he's got that done on the soft tyres. Maybe the medium tyres not working for Johannes. He loses another place. That was some of the best racing we've seen from Mayna in the whole of the first two seasons. And oh, we've got something in the wall. Jack Hickey's left the wall. Jack Hickey's out. Oh, Jack Hickey has left the session. Oh, it might be Bilal connection Khan. issues again for the Torosso driver. Yeah, well, with Khan's down in 11th at the moment and Hapuli Boy in 7th now as he gets past... Uh, and what's oh, happened there? Jay, Jay, Jay Ghost. Ghost. Off. Jay Ghost has had a spin there because DJ Marshall's not far off him now and he is a long way back. Oh, look at the front wing. Yeah, DJ Marshall's in a really good spot now and you can see 
He's going a lot, lot quicker than Jay Ghost around that corner. It might just be sensible for Jay Ghost not to fight this one. It actually, <laughs> according to the graphic, DJ Marshall is on intermediate tires. Uh, oh, and they, right, they're right, interchanging right. with soft tires. That is interesting. Right, right, both kills are DJ Marshall comfortably past him. It was a good move from DJ Marshall, but now they're so close on the start finish straight. Can Gilzo make this pass work and get himself onto the podium? Yes, he's opened the ERS as Gilzo. He's got plenty to use as well, so DJ Marshall's going to have to watch out. What about that for a move? He's trying to go around the outside of him. He broke very, very late there. Couldn't quite make it work. Jay Ghosts all the way down in 12th place. One error. One issue, and you fall all the way out of the points. And this really, really helps the Pooley ball. That's the thing. If you make a mistake here, there are so many drivers who can capitalise from that. There's a great deal of great drivers. A great deal of great, 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 great drivers. That's a lot of great. Yeah, great. <laughs> Just call me Tony the Tiger. <laughs> Great! Well, Hapuli boy up the inside of Mr. Psycho Sane, and he's got P5. The McLaren picks up another position. He's six places ahead of his teammate. He's four places ahead of the guy he shares the championship lead with. It's all going his way at the moment. Yep, yeah, Bilal Khan picked up second place in brazil he's currently in second place here he's not very close to caesar t-pain but with the advantage he has over dj marshall it should be okay as gilzo remains on the back of him dj marshall's decided since one force indy has retired from the session he's going to pick the other one to have a battle with Carnes is staying on the back of johannes but for now can't get past him johannes is sticking it out there on those medium tires the same tires that Carnes is on and mayna remains uh, about a second ahead of him Oh, and Mayna's gone wide. Mayna has gone wide. Johannes takes P7 and Carnes takes P8. And Carnes is still on the back of Johannes. Uh, just two and a half temps now. Oh, oh Carnes goes into the back of Johannes. And Carnes' strategy might well have been ruined in that moment. Well, from one constant five tenths away to another, Gilzo is still five tenths on the back of DJ Marshall for this last pogey of spot. Probably the only two drivers in real contention for it now, you have to say. And DJ Marshall just keeps mastering these corners well enough that Gilzo can't get a good run on it. Realistically, though, Hapuli Boy is showing pace, so he might be able to get in front. And you can see here, Khans looking to make a move on... Sorry, Mayna making a move on Khans. So I think it's that front wing damage that must be affecting him. Khans is now down into P9. I thought Hapuli Boy would be able to catch Gilzo and DJ Marshall quicker than this, but proves what a good job the, the two ahead are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, he's lost it. Oh, the Hapuli Boy has lost it. And oh, oh the Mercedes and Mr. Psycho saying just about avoids it. Hapuli Boy does avoid disaster himself because he's got back on the road in P6, but... Tires must be cooking. Yeah. DJ Marshall only on 10 points at the moment, so a podium would go a long way in kickstarting his campaign. And similarly for Gilzo, he's on 12 points at the moment. If he got fourth place, he'd double that. I think the important thing here for Gilzo is to really nail that turn 13. That's the most important thing. If he can stick behind DJ Marshall, just four or five temps, something like that, and then nail turn 13 going onto the main straight, because overtaking opportunities are so limited here, but turn one has to be the best one of the lot. Yeah, and even if that's the case, if DJ Marshall goes to defend, misjudges his braking zone, if Gilzo can just accelerate calmly out of turn one he'll have him into turn two so now gilzo it's still about six tenths it, it doesn't seem to have gone down or up at all if he can if he can remain within this sort of gap then maybe he'll be able to make something work in a few laps time as they'll come up towards the ghost of jack hickey uh mr psycho saying had a bit of a problem coming out of the chicane and Hapuli boy has been able to close up he was closing up anyway but now the gap is about three temps he's looking to get back the position he once had can he possibly get it going into turn 11 lock up from mr psycho same but he holds it together 
Uh, that battle for P5 will rage on. Perhaps an opportunity for Hapuli Boy heading into the straight because it is literally just three temps between them. He's closer than the likes of Gilzo are to DJ Marshall. Actually, I think Gilzo's had an incident because he's a about 3.2 seconds back now. Um, Hapuli Boy, and he's not very close actually. I think Mr. Psycho Sane did pretty well coming out of turn 13. So going into turn one, Hapuli Boy's not going to be able to get something done. Carnes has come into the pits here. We'll have to see whether it's for a new front wing or not. Um, and we'll have to see what Tyree goes on to. Presumably it'll be the soft. Bilal Khan has come into the pits from P2 and Gilzo's come into the pits from P4. So they are having to make one more change. You'd imagine that Caesar T-Pain uh, and DJ Marshall will come into the pits very soon as well. So Bilal Khan, did he go back out on the soft tyres? Caesar T-Pain is into the pit legs. Caesar T-Pain is into the pits. Let's see what Tyree goes on to. I think Salver could do a double pit stop. It wouldn't matter too much. We've got a Mercedes in there. That must be double petrol. Yep. Yep. Uh, Lapped in the pit lane. Yeah, something you don't see very often. Season 2 pain now. Surely going to go on to the soft tyres once again. And he is released again. We'll have to see where he comes out in regards to DJ Marshall. He's going to do another lap. It's going to be um, in front of him. I think Caesar T-Pain is going to come into the pits in first place and exit the pits in first place. Impressive stuff. It shows the gap he's been able to build. Yeah, so Mr. Psycho Sane is into the pits and we imagine DJ Marshall will come in probably this lap or maybe the lap after. Um, those guys on soft tyres obviously having to two-stop this race. The question remains about Johannes and Jagos. Jagos did come into the pits earlier. He won't have to pit again. It's about whether Johannes does or not. Well, Bilal Khan is a stub behind Jagos a little bit now, who is uh, not coming into pit. And uh, could DJ Marshall emerge in this battle? Maybe, because I don't think Jagos is going to pit again. So Bilal Khan is going to have to pass him on circuit at some point. Maybe he can get it down, down into turn one. And DJ Marshall does come out behind these guys. Has he beaten Gilzo out? He has by a couple of seconds. We have had a real reversal in the weather here. Obviously, starting out on the intermediate tyres, it is absolutely beautiful sunshine now. Complete contrast from the beginning of this race. Caesar T-Pain is 21.3 seconds clear of Johannes. He is pretty much dominating this race. I'll tell you who isn't dominating a race, and that's the gap between Bilal Khan, Jagos, and DJ Marshall. DJ Marshall is slowly closing the gap while these two squabble. We could have a three-wide fight very soon. Yeah, and Gilzo's only seven temps behind DJ Marshall, so there could be four in that scrap. Bilal Khan needs to get past Jagos as quickly as possible here. Oh, and Jay Ghost is now very close to the back of Johannes. There's only about three or four attempts in that. In fact, the gap is under a second between every single car from second through to sixth. This could end up being dramatic going into the start-finish straight or even before that because Bilal Khan is right on the back of Jay Ghost. Johannes goes a little wide going into the corner. Is that going to open the door slightly for Jay Ghost? He's taking a wider line going into the start-finish straight, so theoretically he might have a better run here. There's three cars within about three tenths of each other. Johannes is going to have to defend. He moves to the inside. Bilal Khan is going to go around the outside of all of them. Three wide into the hairpin. And who's going to come out on top? It looks as if Bilal How Khan Bilal and Jay Ghost... Khan? That was a Megs. If anything happens, DJ Marshall, Gilzo pick up the scraps. Johan is massive lockup. DJ Marshall got all over the back of the three of them with Gilzo watching and waiting to catch anything. Bilal Khan started that battle in P4 and he's managed to get both drivers in one move into P2. Fantastic stuff. Jay Ghost has returned into P3. So Johannes has lost out massively here. And now DJ Marshall might fancy a bit of the Renault as he tries to make a move into the chicane. We saw a move I there done last... Him. Oh, Gilzo's had him now. So P5 has gone to the Force India. DJ Marshall trying an ambitious move. It didn't pay off. And even worse than that, he's lost a place. Surely now DJ Marshall is going to look to get his position back. Johannes seems to be the one holding them up here. Uh, and you can understand why with those medium tyres being as old as they are. And he seems to have gone very wide into turn 13, actually. Can DJ Marshall pick up a double toe? Quite possibly, because he's definitely gaining on the pair of them. And Gilzo, is he going to make a move going oh, into... Oh, DJ nine. Marshall going for it all! Johannes has backed out, so he's lost out again by two places at the hairpin. DJ Marshall not quite able to get P4. I thought DJ Marshall was going to go Danny Rick on us for a second. 
Oh my lord. He keeps looking for that diver. I keep thinking it's about to happen. Yeah, you think one lap he is just going to absolutely go for it and anything could happen. Seven laps to go, so he's going to get a few more opportunities to try it yet. It looks as though DJ Marshall is a little bit quicker when it comes to that final sector and the start finish straight, because that's how he held Gilzo off for all those laps. Well, Hopefully Boy will be happy that he's gaining on Carnes at the moment, but the problem for him is Jay Ghost is in a much better position than he is. Um, in fact, at the moment, it's going to be very close. Jay Ghost will have a lead of the championship by just one point over Hapuli Boy. McLaren taking the league by storm. Apparently so. Yeah, it will be 1-2 in the standings after this race. Because uh, Caesar T-Pain at the moment doesn't have any points to his name. And Bilal Khan will be able to insert himself into it as well. He'll be just three points off the lead. But of course, that is how it stands at the moment. There's a l there's still six laps to go. Purple Petrol might win. <laughs> what, from a lap down? <laughs> yeah, anything can happen in the late break in online racing league. Um, that goes down oh, Gil's, Gil's got a bit wide. He has. DJ Marshall's up the inside. He tried this a little bit earlier on another driver. This time he's gone for it on the Force India yet again, though. Not quite getting it done. But Gilzo knows he's there. I know it makes not much of a difference, but Susan t pains lost about five, almost six seconds to these two. Well, uh, when I say these two, Bilal Khan and Jay Ghost. Yeah, that is true. He had a much more comfortable gap than he's got right now. Obviously, 20 seconds is still very comfortable and he could afford to lose seconds per lap and still win this race. But interesting, maybe something's happened out front there. Jay Ghost is building on Bilal Khan. 20 lap old medium tyres. He is doing a fantastic job here. And Bilal Khan, who wants to build this gap, must be begging the McLaren to get out of his mirrors. <laughs> Jay Ghost going up the inside. Barrichello and Schumacher-esque nearly. The McLaren of Jay Ghost. Has he got it done? Bilal Khan. I don't think he's going to be able to DJ defend Marshall's this one. Up the inside inside of Gilzo. Of Gilzo. Two moves within the matter of 10 seconds. Fantastic stuff. P4 changes position, as does P2. As far as I'm aware, Gilzo has got no penalties. DJ Marshall has three seconds. Bilal Khan has six seconds. If it stayed as it is now, Gilzo would finish P3. DJ Marshall would finish P4 and Bilal Khan would be P5. Gilzo's not let DJ Marshall get away and he's going to get DRS. Yeah, there's only three temps be between them now. Plenty of DRS for Gilzo to use as well. So DJ Marshall's going to be defending with everything he's got. Gilzo, much later on the breaks into the corner, there's about two temps between them, is an opportunity going to develop into turn two. DJ Marshall will head to the inside to make sure nothing happens. And for one more run, it looks as if he's maintained P4. He's still got to do it another couple of times, though. I'm not sure if it's due to damage or whether he's taking it really easy, but the gap between Caesar T-Pain in first and Jay Ghost in yeah. second is now just over 12 seconds. That's come down about 15 seconds. Maybe he is just taking it easy. Well, here we go. The Pearl's Foot corner for the Pearl's Foot time as uh, Gilzo is still right behind DJ Marshall. DRS is open, looking for the slipstream. They've passed the pit lane. DJ Marshall is weaving to try and get out of the slipstream. He's not close enough, but who's going to be better going to the second corner? Gilzo has had the better run as of the race, but DJ Marshall is defending into that corner, and it looks as though he's just got the gap out enough. And they're under the three-second mark to Bilal Khan, so currently he's going backwards. On board now with Caesar t Pain. We haven't been on board with him much in the race because, let's face it, he hasn't had much action at all. He's been so dominant. Uh, the gap has come down, but we're going to presume that's just him uh, floating his way home. He's just got to do the Sector 3 once more and we'll be able to crown a new race winner. Three races so far this year and this is going to be our third different race winner. Caesar T-Pain in just his second race and his first race for Sauber is going to claim victory here when he crosses the line to win the Hungarian Grand Prix. A comfortable victory for him and can now he become one of the championship challengers as we're now on board with Jay Ghost. He's going to come home in second. A fantastic recovery drive from him after losing his front wing at some point. DJ Marshall manages to just keep it in front of Gilzo there. And then Gilzo does get the podium. He comes into third. DJ Marshall fourth. And Bilal Khan falls all the way down to fifth. Hapuli Boy finishes one second behind your hangers. And they, their penalties cancel each other out. No movement there. So as a result of corner cutting, Bilal Khan has actually lost um, he's lost five 
points on where he could have finished and Gilzo has gained five points. DJ Marshall doesn't actually change because whilst he lost the place to Gilzo, he gained the place on Bilal Khan. Johannes picks up P6, a tough race for him. On board with Mr. Psycho saying he's actually out of fuel. I think he's about to run out of fuel. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to make any difference. Johannes has finished P6 ahead of Hapuli Boy. So again, though, Johannes struggling for points this year. Hapuli Boy does finish ahead of Khan's who he was level with in the championship before this race. Mayna is going to cross the line in P9 to pick up two points. And Mr. Psycho saying will eventually get there to pick up one point. And there you have it. That's the end of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Let's get to the podium. And there you have it for the first time this season. And the first time since you, Sam, a salvo driver has won a race. Yeah, continuing my wonderful legacy that I didn't really leave. A lovely podium there. We've got a, uh, a Salva, a McLaren and a Force India. Three teams I would love to all see on the podium in real life. But you know what? You get it here in the late breaking league. Damn right you do. Gilzo gets his first podium in the league. And Jagos, the guy on the left there, is going to claim the championship lead with second place. Just an update for you. Caesar T. Payne had an orange front wing on lap 29. Ah, very interesting. That's why he was losing the time. But he does win this race ahead of Jagos in second. Third place was Gilzo, DJ Marshall in fourth. Bilal Khan finishes in fifth. Johannes sixth. Hapuli Boy in seventh. Khan's eighth. Maynard was in ninth. And then rounding out the points is Mr. Psycho saying, the guys who didn't score points, Purple Petrol in 11th. Jack Kiki didn't race for much of it due to connection. P12. Nellez the same in P13. Duxky was 14th. Curly Apex 15th. No points for Williams this time out. Home back, a dramatic crash for him. Saw his tyre go off in P16. Giblin and Hickey were 17th and 18th. And that's going to do it from the Hungarian Grand Prix. Join us next time out where we will be in Australia. Until then, I've been Ben Hocking. I've been Harry. And I've been Samuel Sage. And remember, keep breaking late.